All right, guys, so at this point, we've actually seen all of the types of factoring that we're going to need to use in order to factor quadratic expressions. But what we're going to do in this section is we're going to kind of mix all of them together and see if we can tell what type of factor we need to use and kind of some of the strategies that we can do in order to factor when they're all mixed together. So to decide what type of factor we need to do, here's kind of a, a checklist of things that, that you can do. Number one, always check for a greatest common factor first. So before you do anything else in a problem, always look for that greatest common factor. Two, is the part that's left a difference of squares? So in other words, does it have two terms? In which case, that's going to be your second type of factoring, which is what we looked at actually most recently in 8.5. So difference of squares, that's two terms. Or is the part that's left over a quadratic trinomial? In other words, does it have three terms? In which case, we're going to follow the, the steps that we did in 8.3 and 8.4. Finally, is the part that's left over four terms, in which case that's going to be where we use that grouping method that we saw in section 8.2. So that's kind of, kind of the, the idea, is looking to see do we have two terms, three terms, or four terms, and then that's going to decide what type of factoring we try to use. All right, so let's start with this first example. We've got 28x squared minus 63. So step number one is we always look for a greatest common factor first. Both 28 and 63 are divisible by 9, or rather 7. So 28 and 63 are divisible by 7. 28 divided by 7 is 4. 63 divided by 7 is 9. So that gives us 4x squared minus 9 inside of the parentheses. So looking at what's left over, we have a total of one, two terms. That's our clue for two terms that we're going to be doing a difference of squares. And in fact, if you look at your two terms, they are in fact perfect squares. Starting with the number four, that's two multiplied by two. Next is x squared, that's x multiplied by x. Finally is nine, that's three multiplied by three. And then remember, for difference of squares, you make one of them positive, one of them negative. And then finally, make sure that that greatest common factor that we factored out at the very beginning is still a part of our final answer. All right, let's look at another example. We've got 3x squared plus 9x minus 30. In which case, first of all, looking for a greatest common factor, all of our terms are divisible by 3. If we take 3 and divide by 3, that's 1. 9 and divide by 3, that's 3. 30 and divide by 3, that's 10. So that would be 1x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now we'll look to continue factoring with what is left inside of the parentheses. This time it is three terms, so we're not going to be doing difference of squares. Instead, we're going to start by taking a multiplied by c. That's 1 multiplied by negative 10 is negative 10. And then we'll put our positive 3 underneath of it. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 10 and add to be positive 3. Now, if you need to make a list, feel free to do that. I will probably not make lists in this section. You can go back to previous sections if you want to see um, using the list. Uh, I'm just going to probably just give you the two numbers today in these notes. Um, in this case, the two numbers are 5 and negative 2. So again, that's 5 multiplied by negative 2, which is multiplying to be negative 10, and also 5 plus negative 2, or 5 minus 2, um, adds to be positive 3. Now, at this point, we're actually done, but if you weren't sure, then remember your last step of these problems is to take the number in front of x squared and put it above each of those numbers inside the diagram. And when you do that, you'll notice that on both sides, you're not going to be able to simplify because the number on top is a 1 in both cases. So then your answer is going to be 1x plus 5, 1x minus 2. Remember to not write the 1 in front of x. And then just copy down the 3 that you factored out at the beginning 
And there is your final answer. Now, because the number in front of x squared was a 1, really we could have just gone straight to using 5 and negative 2 as our answers inside the parentheses. But if you weren't sure, it's, it's not very much more work to put the one above each of those and look to see if it simplifies. All right, so let's look at our next example. We've got 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. So we've got three terms already and no greatest common factor. You can't divide 4, 7, and 2 by, by the same number. So we're going to go straight into taking a multiplied by c. So 4 multiplied with negative 2 is negative 8. Copy down the number in the middle, which is positive 7. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 8, add to be positive 7. And those two numbers are going to be negative 1 and positive 8. So negative 1 multiplied with 8 is negative 8, and negative 1 plus 8 is positive 7. Again, if you weren't sure, make out your list of numbers that multiply to be negative 8 and then just start adding your pairs. Now in this case, it is going to be very important that we take this number of 4 and put it above each of those numbers. Unlike the previous problem, there was a number in front of x squared, so it will be a little bit more important in this case. And on the left side, 4, negative 1, nothing we can do to simplify there, so we'll just copy that down as 4x minus 1. But on the right side, 4 and 8 are both divisible by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1 and 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that's going to be 1x plus 2. Remember to not write the 1 in front of x, and here is your final answer. All right, for this next example, we've got 64x squared minus 4. So the first thing we need to do is factor out a greatest common factor if there is one, and in fact, 64 and 4 are both divisible by 4. If we take 64 and divide by 4, that's 16. 4 and divide by 4, that's 1. So that would be 16x squared minus 1. Next, we'll look at what's inside the parentheses. Both We have two terms that are left. And so remember, two terms is difference of squares. And in fact, we do have a difference of squares. So let's go term by term. 16 would be 4 multiplied by 4x squared would be x multiplied by x, and 1 would be 1 multiplied by itself. Make sure one of them is positive, one of them is negative, and then don't forget to copy down your greatest common factor. All right, so we've already seen kind of two types of factoring. We've seen difference of squares. We've seen a quadratic trinomial, which is where it has three terms. On this next example, we're finally going to see one with four terms. Now again, always start by looking for a greatest common factor, and there isn't one. So remember, when there are four terms, we're going to group them up. We're going to look at one group of two, and then a second group of two. For the first group of two, x cubed plus 3x squared, our greatest common factor there. We don't have any numbers in common, but we do have a variable for each term. Remember to take the smaller of the two exponents, which is x squared. So we're taking away two x's from each term. That'll leave us with just x to the first power. And again, do not put the 1. And then after the 3, both of our x's are going to be canceled out. So that will be a plus 3. Now looking at our second group of terms, negative 5x minus 15. Both of those are divisible by 5. And because in front of x is a negative 5, we're going to factor out a negative 5 instead of just positive 5. So then negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. Negative 15 divided by negative 5 is a plus 3. So that leaves us with a 1x plus 3. And again, make sure that you're not putting the 1 in front of x. So then looking at our two sets of parentheses, they do in fact match one another which is good. That's going to be what we'll factor out next. And that will leave us with an x squared and a minus 5. And at that point, we are done. All right. For this next example, we've got x squared minus 6x minus 16. So we're looking for 
how many terms we have, first of all. Well, actually for a GCF, first of all, uh, but the number in front of x squared is one, so there's not gonna be a greatest common factor. And so at this point, we look at how many terms we have, which is a total of three. So we'll start by taking a multiplied by c, one multiplied with negative 16, which is just negative 16. Copy down the number in the middle, which is a negative six. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 16, add to be negative six, and those two numbers are gonna be negative eight and positive two. Again, if you're not sure, make a list and see which numbers will work, and eventually you'll get to negative eight and two. At this point, we're going to, we could actually be done at this point, but just to be careful, let's continue to take the number in front of x squared and put it above each of those numbers. Again, since it's a one, you're not gonna be able to simplify on either side, so that's just going to be 1x minus 8 and 1x plus 2. So remember, if it's a 1 in front of x squared, you're really just done once you find those two numbers. But if you want to be careful, go ahead and put the 1 above each of them, just like you would if it was a different number besides 1. And that way, you're making sure that you don't forget a step if it's something else. All right, I think we've got a few more examples to take a look at, and then we will be done. So in this next example, we've got 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. So first of all, no greatest common factor, can't divide any of those by the same thing. So we'll start by taking a multiplied by c, 4 multiplied by 9 is 36. And then copy down your middle term, which is negative 12. So we need numbers that multiply to be 36, add to be negative 12. Those two numbers are going to be negative 6 and negative 6. Next, we'll take our number, which is in front of x squared, and we will put it above each of those values. And on both sides, 9 and negative 6 are divisible by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. On the right side, they're actually the exact same number, so we can do the exact same thing to get 3 and negative 2, at which point our two parentheses are going to be 3x minus 2 and 3x minus 2. Now, this is actually a special type of factoring. We did not necessarily look at this when we looked at difference of squares, um, but this is what's known as a perfect square trinomial. And the reason of that is because if you look, 3x minus 2 is the same factor written twice. And so what we'll oftentimes do is we'll just copy it down once and say it's 3x minus 2 being squared. And that's probably the better answer to use, so that'll be how I'll leave my final answer. So if you end up with a scenario where the two factors are the same, just copy them down once and call it being squared. All right, a few more examples to take a look at, and then I think we will be done. So on this next example, we've got 24x squared plus 30x. So first thing we need to do is factor out a greatest common factor. 24 and 30 are both divisible by 6, and then x squared and x, x to the first power, is the smaller of our two degrees, so that's going to be part of our GCF as well. So then left inside the parentheses, when we divide those both by 6x, 24 divided by 6 is 4, 30 divided by 6 is 5, and then we'll take an x away from both terms. That'll leave us with x to the first power and nothing after the 5. So then copy down what's left. We've got 4x to the first power. Again, don't copy down the 1, and then plus 5. And actually, at this point, if you look at what's left inside the parentheses, it doesn't have a degree of 2. It's only got a degree of 1. And actually what that means is we don't even have to worry about difference of squares. We're actually done. So the goal is to always get it to where it's just x to the first power in your entire problem. And in this case, that happened just after the GCF. So that means that we can be done. All right. Two more examples to take a look at, and we will be done. So on our next example, we've got 16x squared plus 4x minus 6. This time we do have a greatest common factor that we can divide out first, which is a 2. Um, so 16 divided by 2 is 8. 
4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So that'll be 8x squared plus 2x minus 3 that'll be left inside the parentheses. So now we'll go into our factoring for any time we have three terms. So anytime we have three terms, remember, take A multiplied by C, which is going to be negative 24. And then copy down your middle term, which is a positive 2. So now we're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 24 and add to be positive 2. And those two numbers are going to be negative 4 and positive 6. So now we'll take our 8, which is our number in front of x squared, and put it above each of those values so that we can look to see if we can simplify. So on the left side, 8 and negative 4 are both divisible by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and negative 4 divided by 4 is negative 1. Also on the right side, 8 and 6 are both divisible by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So it looks like our two parentheses are going to be 2x and a minus 1, 4x and a plus 3. And then it's just important to remember to copy down the 2 that was in front of your parentheses in your final answer. And here is that answer. All right, let's take a look at one last example, and that'll be it for today. So we've got 9x cubed plus 9x squared minus x minus 1. And we've got four terms. So four terms is where we do grouping. So looking at our first group of terms, 9x cubed plus 9x squared, your greatest common factor there, both are divisible by 9, and the smaller of the two exponents is x squared. So we'll factor out a 9x squared from both terms. So starting with just the 9, 9 divided by 9 is 1 in both cases. And then x squared will take away two x's from each term, so that'll be x to the first power. And for the second term, x squared goes completely away. So let's see, we have 1x to the first power, so that's just x. And then plus 1, since there's nothing else with that 1, we do need to write it down. As for our second group of terms, negative x and negative 1, the only thing you can divide them by is 1, but... Since it's really a negative 1 in front of x, that's going to be our greatest common factor that we're going to factor out. So when we factor out a negative 1, negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. And once again, negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1. So that would be 1x plus 1. And again, don't put the 1 in front of x, but you do need the 1 after x. At this point, notice that the x plus 1s match one another, so let's go ahead and factor those out first. And then we'll go ahead and copy down what was left over, which is a 9x squared and a minus 1. Now, normally at this point, we would be done. But if you're careful and you look, that second parentheses can actually still be factored. Notice that 9x squared minus 1 is two terms, and they're both a perfect square. So actually we have difference of squares that we can continue factoring. The 9 would be 3 times 3, x squared would be x times x, and 1 would be 1 multiplied by itself. Again, make one of them positive, one of them negative, and now make sure that you copy down the entire parentheses that was in front of them. So in this case, we actually had to do kind of two types of factoring all in one, I would say that's probably the hardest type of problem you could possibly see. Probably won't see very many of those on the review or test, but kind of a fun one to look at at the very end of this unit. That being said, guys, I know today was kind of a review already, but we will still have a regular review day um, to go through everything um, kind of separately. Until then, have a great rest of your day.